Can someone tell me what kind of dog this is? Hi everyone, I'm Kate Bonnie, and welcome to Kate Bonnie Country. I have been volunteering my time at the Bibb County Animal Shelter located in Brent, Alabama to groom the dogs. Today, I will show the process of grooming Snuffy. Snuffy showed up at someone's house on the weekend and became known as Snuffy due to the shaggy coat resembling Snuffleupagus. At first, we thought it was a sheepdog. However, the coat was so full of mats that the person decided shaving her down was the best option. With all the fur gone, we were able to determine that Snuffy is a female and most likely an Aussie Doodle, a hybrid between an Australian Shepherd and a Poodle. I noted that her head shape, the structure of her skull, and the fall over her eyes are reminiscent of a Bouvier de Flanders so there might be some terrier in her as well. We can also see that she was on her own for a while and a bit undernourished. This is a wad of matted fur that came from shaving one paw. And this is the foot that it came off of. See how red and irritated the skin is? The knots between her toes clearly caused discomfort. The kind person that provided her with relief could not keep her, so she was surrendered to the shelter on a Monday. I went in that Tuesday to groom a few dogs and tried to help her out. Her skin was very pink and irritated, so I did not think she would be able to handle a bath and flea treatment that day. Since she was shaved down and susceptible to sunburn, I could not take her outside to groom her. So I took her into an indoor breezeway to see what I could do. I was concerned that she would not allow the Good Samaritan to touch her head or tail. I inspected her tail for signs of wounds. I felt several compacted mats that would need to be shaved out and a hard lump about an inch from the end of her tail. I thought she might have broken her tail and that it healed poorly. Her tail was very tender and I did not want to cause her pain, so I left the tail alone for now and focused on her face. Unfortunately, the heat had overpowered both my phone and my stationary camera, so the action camera on my chest was the only one working. The camera placement was not ideal for actually showing what I am doing. Mostly, you are just seeing snippets of trying to trim her beard, mustache, and around her eyes. Snuffy had an overgrown curtain that prevented her from seeing. Her eyes had a lot of discharge, indicating irritation, most likely due to her fur poking and scratching her eyes. Her ears were coated with wax, and I suspected she might have an ear infection. She also inherited the poodle trait of ear hair that has to be plucked out. If you've made it this far, please like and subscribe to this video. I am very close to 100 subscribers and would love to hit that mark by July 4th. I volunteer my time and supplies, so your support is so very important to grow the channel and help these dogs. Please feed the algorithm by writing matted mess in the comments. A well-fed algorithm pushes this video out to more people, grows the channel, and lets me know that you care about these dogs. If you would like to help the Bibb County Animal Shelter, please click on the video link above. That will direct you to a video that contains information on the best way to help these animals. Thank you so much for your support. Snuffy had been in the shelter for less than 24 hours at this point. She was very stressed, so I was satisfied with trimming her face just enough for her to see and to keep the fur out of her mouth when she eats. This is what she looked like at the end of her first session. I went back one week later to provide additional care. Unfortunately, I got to the shelter and realized I had left my main camera at home. Once again, I had only the action camera footage to work with. I chose to put it on my headband, but it didn't want to stay in the correct angled position. It kept slipping so I could only film straight down. Her skin was no longer red and irritated, and her fur was regrowing nicely. That meant I could bathe her. I tried to keep the flow gentle, got her soaked down, and shampooed her in Adam's Flea and Tick shampoo. Her skin was dry due to having no fur to protect it, so I did follow up with fluff off de shedding conditioner. I used the de shedding formula in hopes of helping the mats on her head and tail release a little bit to make them easier to brush out. Then I towel dried her. I had assembled my portable grooming arm and attached it to a desk that was in the breezeway.
I laid down a donated blanket to absorb some of the excess water and tried to hook her to it. I very quickly realized that the surface of the table was too slippery, which made her unstable, so I went to plan B. I took her outside into a shaded area, since sunburn is still a concern, allowed her to run around and air dry. I cannot show you that since the area faces the county jail next door and filming is not permitted in that area. I can tell you that she needs a large area to run. The five foot leash was too short for her to get a good run in, so she just ran at full speed in circles around me for a solid ten minutes until I was too dizzy to allow her to continue. That dried her coat enough for me to work on her. I brought her back to the breezeway, attached her to my waist, and started working on her again. My first concern was her tail. I inspected it again, used a slicker brush and comb to work out what I could, and determined that it would be best to shave her tail down to match the rest of her body. Once again, she was distracted by the other dogs barking and people walking by. This environment is just not conducive to calm, peaceful grooming. In the future, I will pick up a dog, take it to my mom's basement a few miles away, groom it, and return it. If I have time, I will do the same with the second dog. If not, I will revisit dogs from previous grooms to brush them and prevent mats from reforming. Snuffy will need a quick brushing every week until she finds her forever home. Snuffy is no longer at the Bibb County Shelter. She has been transferred to a rescue that will follow through on her veterinary care and find her a forever home. I eventually had to turn the camera off and find a quiet room to groom her. This turned out to be an area where filming is not permitted. These are her after pictures. I was able to complete her tail. The spot that I thought was broken was much less concerning once the mats were gone. It was also not as sensitive. I was able to trim her face a bit more, clean her ears, and clean her tear stains. She still has a dirty beard, but she was not ready for a full face wash. It is important to meet the shelter dogs where they are so we can live with a dirty face for now.